the other person you think of in that context, as Michael Kroger alluded to, you don't have to be that popular, but if you're seen as credible and yeah. people respect you, John Howard was someone of, of that ilk, I guess, for yeah. many years, four, four elections. Yeah, no, I mean, he was Mr 18%. Yeah, I know you guys have discussed that earlier in the week. But I think what was interesting is that the lack of response to the polling that Andrew uh, released. The Libs didn't go out and say, no, it's wrong. Uh, and yeah. if you just look at Peter Dutton's performance this week, he has run from the media. I know he's done some localised campaigning at the Roval Footy Club. I mean, he, he only went to one part of the electorate. The most interesting thing is he just went to the strong Liberal part of the electorate. He didn't bother trying to campaign in the not-so-strong area. Uh, and in terms of his question time, uh, lack of appearances, in terms of media conferences, he did not want to be seen on the telly or in the newspapers this week. So the Liberal Party's actions suggest that they've got the same polling as, as well, Andrew It Rivers. certainly wasn't, yeah, contested privately to me Absolutely. either, I have to say. In defence of Peter Dutton, though, he often doesn't ask a lot of the questions in question time. So mm. there was nothing unusual in terms of that this week. Uh, I would ask the first question I would have thought Thursday. with a by-election coming up and wanting to drive home the send a message to Albo, you'd have been on the front foot. And to not change the parliamentary tactics, to be pretty invisible on press conferences, it, it was a telling... Well, well you know, how big Only is... to insiders, but it was a telling message that their polling says exactly the same. Well, how big is his problem in Victoria? Because that's what everyone's well, talking about. How much is his problem and how much is the Liberal problem? I mean, the federal government... The federal Liberals can mm. win in Victoria... The state guys here have been in permanent opposition for nearly three decades and they, they took a massive own goal and were redeeming uh, now 10 days ago. And, and the Conservative base in this seat splits out to a very churchy, almost Bible Belt community uh, and those that are Conservative, perhaps not so religiously motivated, but it's a significant... I mean, you used to talk about Menzies, Kevin Andrews' old seat as having a Bible Belt. Aston's got that times 10. So how has deeming gone down? Well, I'm told people are referencing it. Mm. when they work, walk into the mm. pre polls. So also the most interesting lead up to a by election, isn't it? Yes. And trying to hold and, on. And I don't know if we can pick this up on the screen and people can pick this up at home, but you can see this is the seat of Aston and these are booths. You can see the red are Labor booths at the last election in 2022, uh, federal election, and the blue are the blue booths that went Liberal. So it really is quite a divided seat wow. in terms of where Labor and Liberal are. And I'm told this is pretty much where it played out too in the recent state election in November. So... People made the point about there was a depressed vote for Alan Tudge on the back of uh, Scott Morrison and, and the uh, consensual affair. Those numbers, though, played out almost to a T in the underlying state seat. So I'd hazard to guess there's a brand issue out there as much as there's a Morrison issue. This is the Aston by-election here on Sky News.